right, well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of The Musician Beat, which is our ongoing series of interviews and conversations with musicians from the Waterloo Cedar Falls Symphony, talking about all kinds of things that are going on, in this case talking about some really creative work done by the two people that you see on your screen right in front of you. And that, uh, that is a, a wonderful uh, pair of musicians who play in the orchestra, uh, do other things with the orchestra, um, including recently, and that's what we're here to talk about. So welcome, guys. Would you mind in introducing yourself to our audience today? Yeah, it's great to be here with you. I'm Hannah Howland Jacobs. And I'm Austin Jacobs. Okay. And we're we're both violinists. We uh, we play with the symphony. Um, in case you're anxious as to why we're sitting <laughs> so close to each other without masks on, we are a right. married couple. Hence, yes. Hence why we are uh, in the same uh, vicinity with one, you know, <laughs> with one another right now. You guys are getting good at this. That's the information we want to hear. Yes. And and uh, one of the trickiest things, of course, um, during this time with with musicians has been getting together in person. So you guys have a unique situation. You're both musicians. You're actually both violinists. Um, and you're able to work together. Tell us a little bit about your background as musicians, and then um, maybe from there you could you could step in a little bit to talking about how you guys wound up being kind of an act, like a duo together um, as a pair. Uh, so I'm um, very curious to kind of hear about that path from, from being individual violinists to being duo violinists. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, I, I grew up in Cedar Falls. Um, I spent my childhood in uh, Russell Hall in the UNI Suzuki School, um, working with all the great teachers there. Um, and then I went off to the University of Minnesota uh, to study violin performance up there, and then I returned to you and I uh, for my master's degree, and that's kind of where we met. Um, Austin was in school too, so yeah, uh, I grew up in Marshalltown, Iowa. Uh, my background with music is it's sort of typical and atypical in in a sense. Uh, you know, I was in band and orchestra growing up. I played clarinet in band and violin in school orchestra, um, but my my real love for music came from playing. Uh, really loud music with friends uh, <laughs> in rock bands, garage rock bands. So, um, you know, I didn't really focus a whole lot on violin when I was younger. It wasn't really until uh, until I went to college where violin kind of became more of my emphasis. That's a really um, kind of interesting background, especially the idea of, you know, sometimes people start off in classical music because it's what's, you know, they've got at school and the parents are like, hey, let's do classical music. Um, you know, and then later it's like, I want to break out and, and be a rock musician or be a jazz musician, you know, and then have it go the other way. That's that's really interesting. But it must allow you to sort of bring some interesting things to playing in like a group together. I mean, tell us a little bit about the kinds of things you could, you guys do together as a duo. And also just like, how is that different? How is your work different playing as a duo, um, kind of like your own little band, than doing all the other gigs that, you know, you're, you normally would do like symphony and things like that? Well, I mean, one, one benefit of, you know, being a married couple that both plays violin uh, is that we're able to explore the vast realm of uh, violin duet repertoire that exists, which is which is pretty awesome because we've, we've both noted on many occasions that that's probably something that we really, really wouldn't get to do otherwise if it wasn't so convenient being in the same household. <laughs> right. So. Yeah, if, the God, last year. <laughs> if God forbid, Sorry. like one of you, if one of you had like, you know, been a violinist and, and married a violist or something, that would have been horrible. So, you know, thank God you're both violinists and you can play that that repertoire. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Hannah, yeah. I didn't I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Just, just oh no, that's that fine. Uh, just over the last year, you know, with so many concerts and other gigs and things that we've been doing being canceled, it's given us a lot of time to just kind of play around and find new music and um, explore that realm. <laughs> And also with Austin's um, background in guitar, too, it, it opens the door to us doing some like violent guitar duos and um, things like that also, which has been been pretty fun to try things out. Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, do you guys like go out and do weddings and all these things? But obviously there hasn't been much of that this last year. So aside from the program that we'll speak about here in just a couple of minutes, what are, what are what other kinds of things are you doing? I mean, do, do you guys... Um, perform music. I, I think I've seen you do a virtual thing on behalf of the symphony at least once. But what are the things? And are you are you teaching, or you do that together? Do you do it separately? Tell us a little bit about sort of just what the musical life looks like for you right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, um, we're, we're both teaching. I teach through the UNI Suzuki School, all virtual right now. Um, and, and like you said, is every now and then something comes up to the opportunity to do some sort of virtual concert. Um, I have played a few weddings le- uh, last fall, which it was kind of interesting to see mm-hmm. how different people uh, put those together. And uh, we've done a, a couple of like local high school musicals, um, mm-hmm. which is interesting to see how that was done sort of physically distanced and, and stuff like that. So just kind of putting things together like that. Um, yeah, and as, as she said, yeah. I mean, we're, we're both teaching. So my, my full-time job is uh, teaching elementary orchestra okay. uh, for the Iowa City Community School District. So, so you've, you've, you've got, I mean, you guys are, are working a fair amount in terms of teaching in addition to whatever playing and duet uh, activities you may have. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It keeps us pretty busy. I mean, we both feel very fortunate that uh, despite all that's going on right now, we're still able to make a living as a musician. And, you know, we feel very, very fortunate that um, there's all this technology that exists that makes this possible. Whereas, you know, I, I can't imagine, you know, 50 years ago yeah. or so, you know, if, if something like this had hit, you know, it would really put musicians in a, in a tougher spot than they already are. Yeah, yeah, we'd be teaching lessons outside here in this like minus thirty degree weather that we've had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which just doesn't fare well with string instruments. Yeah, yeah. But, but I don't think that fares well with anything. But, but you know, uh, well, you know, it, it's great to hear a positive story too, because you know a lot, there's been a lot of doom and gloom this year. And as we've talked to musicians, I mean, we hear the ref- refrain over and over again: we really miss getting together, we really miss playing as an ensemble. We obviously can't give big live concerts, but it's fabulous to hear that you guys have, um, you know, developed some other outlets and and. You know, actually, that that whole situation is kind of what led us at the symphony to start the process of talking with you guys about creating a virtual program for kids featuring your violin duo, but it's not just the violin duo. Um, Tell us a little bit about your association with our guest artist on our new kids series that you guys premiere with your duo, um, and then we can talk a little bit about the idea behind that program. It's really neat, the, the, the program that you guys put together. Yeah, definitely. Joni Griffith is an old friend of mine. Um, she grew up in Cedar Falls also, um, and she, I, I knew her primarily through the Suzuki School also. She's a violinist as well, um, and we went to the University of Minnesota together. Uh, she's a vocalist, uh, studied uh, vocal training there, and um, works currently up in the Twin Cities as a uh, a musician, an uh, artist, uh, an actor. She does it all. Woman of all trades. Um, and she's uh, always uh, got this creative energy that we just thought would be a really fun thing to bring into this show. Um, and it was a, a lot of fun to put that together with her. And us not being actors, she was a vital component <laughs> to it for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Well, we should we should clarify to our our. Uh, viewers here, and they may be they may be viewing this the week of the premiere of this program that we're talking about. But this is a, a new series for um, kids. We've we've developed this together with you guys. Um, at least this first couple episodes here. It's called the Music Lab, and I'll have you talk about um, the concept behind the program. But one of the things that it does is kind of pick up um, a lot of the threads of our Lollipop concert series, which is a very approachable series of free concerts for the youngest audiences. You know, meant to be suitable for kids who are you know, three or four years old, but enjoyable for kids all the way up kind of through elementary school. And we try to make these fun, you know, for adults as well. So there is another component aside from just preparing music and performing that. And in fact, that to me seems seems to be one of the, the big takeaways of the whole pandemic is just the idea of just performing music and that's it. Um, it's kind of going out the window now as we look for different kinds of ways to connect with people. So, um, so talk about the process of working with Joni, working with an actor, um, developing a script. I mean, wh- where did you guys start and, and how did you come up with the concept? Tell us a little bit about the concept and then tell us about the challenges of putting this together to the point that we actually sat down and filmed it. Yeah, well, yeah. about a year or so ago or a year and a half ago, we, we thought it'd be really neat to try and devise some sort of educational outreach program, but we wanted to structure it in a way that was a little different than your standard lecture style, like tell them what you're going to teach, 
teach it to them and then recap what you taught. Um, you know, we wanted to kind of model it a little more after almost like televised. I mean, it kind of became more like televised educational programming where, you know, the kids are, are learning stuff that maybe aren't even necessarily fully aware that they're learning because they're just having fun, which is, you know, we're both pretty passionate to the, about the idea that, you know, just playing and having fun is how, is how kids learn. And so we kind of want it to have uh, a very, um, playful sort of, I don't know, exciting energy in that regard. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, you know, early on last spring when we were both at home and not, not a whole lot to do, we, uh, we were finding these pieces of music to work on. And, uh, when the, the symphony approached us about this concert, we, we were kind of looking at this music that we've been practicing and playing with and realized that, Hey, maybe this is what we should build this out of. And we, we realized that through some of, some of these pieces that we had pulled out randomly to work on together, um, there was this theme sort of woven through all of them that had to do with, um, theme and variations um, as a musical uh, concept and and also just like th the idea that composers are are inspired have been inspired by other musicians other pieces of music other composers um, and all artists are inspired by all of our experiences and, and colored in that way so we kind of built it from that concept and then when we brought Joni in and kind of told her our ideas and showed her the music that we were planning on working with um she really helped us bring these characters to life and um give them personality and um and really took on writing the script as just head on and made made something really fun out of it well, it really, it really is great. It's so much fun, and and Joni, no doubt, brought this you know fabulous um, character personality to it. Um, but you know, originally, you guys created this for what we thought would be a, very similar to a lollipop concert. We thought we might originally be doing it live. Then we determined it at one point um, over the course of the fall that we were not going to do this with a live audience. And we thought we might just film the thing as if we were performing for a live audience. And then at that time, we all took a pause and said, "What if?" Dot, dot, dot. I might have been the one who said what if, because I usually am, and then everybody else groans and has to deal with, you know, whatever my <laughs> ridiculous idea is. However, I think what we said was, what if we did something that was a little bit more geared towards the actual screen, since we know we're not going to have an audience? Tell us a little bit about the challenge for you guys of making the shift from, hey, we're going to talk to kids right here in person, play music for them, and talk with them about what's happening, what we feel, what we're doing, and shifting that into an environment where we're going to be recording um, and, and preparing this for the screen and obviously bringing in, you know, some production elements for the symphony. What was that like for you guys making that shift? Um, I think the program really lent itself pretty well to, to making that shift um, without, without too much trouble. Um, you know, throughout yeah. this entire pandemic, I think one of the biggest issues that musicians have faced is just kind of losing the connective nature of, of music when you're trying to uh, um, perform to an audience virtually or even just through teaching. You know, you can't, you can't play with your students uh, in person like you normally would. And so um, I guess we kind of shifted more towards what I was alluding to earlier with that educational programming sort of vibe of it's, you know, here's a theatrical sort of episode or performance that you can observe and still learn stuff. Um, even though that we're, even if we're not able to be there in person with you interacting directly. Um, but throughout the course of the production, you know, we, we really tried to make it a focus of, you know, breaking that fourth wall and, and, and acting as though we were in the same room with, uh, with our audience. Yeah, definitely was a different, um, different experience all together though, because, you know, if you're in front of a group of kids, you could you feed off of their energy. They, you see them get excited and it's, it's easier for you to just like kind of roll with it. And, um, you know, as, as not actors, as musicians being on stage in front of a camera, um, rather than a, a human uh, audience, uh, it was definitely a, a completely different experience for both of us. Um, just like you talk to a camera and you <laughs> you have to go back, back and forth between memorized lines and playing. And that, that was in itself a, a 
completely new thing for us too. Just like, you know, we don't, it's not just the music that we have to worry about. It's also remembering the lines <laughs> and, and all of that. But um, it was a really fun, fun experience. Uh, I think, I think we really enjoyed it. Yeah. We're, we're really grateful to the symphony for having provided us yeah. with this opportunity to, to realize this because it, it, it was a ton of fun to put together. Definitely. Well, it was great to work collaboratively on this because I think we have something that's much better than anything any of us would have done on our own, including, you know, the symphony team. And so, so that's, it's really a testament to what you can do when you bring, you know, uh, some really creative people together. And, and for me, my role in this was to help just produce the thing, make sure all the strings kind of <laughs> got looped together at the end. So I, I, you know, had a pretty good appreciation of what that recording day was going to be like. But I'm going to ask you guys, aside from actually playing music, which is not easy, and it's really hard to do that when the mics are on, but let's just leave that aside. That's kind of what we're supposed to do for a living. What, during that day of recording, was the hardest thing for each of you to try to get comfortable with? You know, I, I had a sense, like I said, going in of what was going to be tricky, what would be easy. But we should let people know, we're not giving away a lot about the show, but... Joni, our actress, um, she wasn't even in the same space as you guys. We filmed this in a way that was was rather safe and distanced, and she wasn't actually in the same room when we filmed it. So, so you guys tell us, each of you, kind of what was the hardest thing about producing this and recording it on that big recording day that we had a couple weeks back? There was one moment in particular, without giving too much away, I don't want to you know <laughs> spoil anything, but where we, we were uh, asked by you, Jason, <laughs> and, uh, and some of the other production staff to, to really kind of go outside of our comfort zone and uh, act maybe a little more. Um, Mad scientist might be the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> and we would, would typically behave, uh, you know, in front of anybody, let alone a camera. So um, that was that was challenging that from was an tricky, acting perspective. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think just the the amount of focus it takes to to try and. Um, you know, when you're recording, you're so hyper-focused on the quality of every note from a musical standpoint, and then from an acting standpoint, you know, it's kind of easy to get in your head and, and uh, maybe, I don't know. Overthink. <laughs> Overthink yeah, things. Overanalyze. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, ruminate maybe on something that you had just said a moment ago that maybe wasn't exactly how you wanted it. Um, so I think just, you know, trying to strike a balance between staying focused and not, and not getting in your head too much was, for me, a challenge anyway. Yeah, no, I would, I would completely agree with that. That and you know when when you're performing something uh, live, you you go through it one time, and that or you you might have a couple of performances um, of it. But that day we went through each part of this multiple times, and um, making sure that you're you're trying to do things the same way every time, so that the different camera angles. Um, are catching the, the same thing each time and um, keeping the energy up and, and the focus in there for that extended amount of time, uh, I think was, was a challenge, but um, an, an interesting look into a different sort of thing that, that people do, you know, it's as, as, uh, symphony performers and, and teachers primarily, you know, we don't really have that opportunity very much. So it was, it was fun to get to see that world a little bit more. Yeah. So it was kind really, of gave some insight yeah. into the recording musician slash, uh, actor, <laughs> tele yeah. television actor, yeah. film actor, uh, yeah. Trying to kind of get a glimpse into their life a little bit was, yeah. was, was interesting. It was, a, it was a really fun session. I've been lucky enough to do different kinds of sessions, you know, like, like what we did. And, and I remember, you know, a ways into the day, I said, you guys want to take a break? And I think you said, oh, we're pretty good. We'll keep going for a little bit. And, you know, maybe an hour later, I think you were kind of on your hands and knees backstage looking for food and drink. Like, are we going to survive? Yeah. <laughs> it was a tiring day for sure, but it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, you guys were, you guys were great. All right. Well, we got to wrap up, but before we do, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, is there anything you'd like to share with our viewers today about this project or just about what it's like to you know, be a musician in general uh, during this period of time, anything you're excited about for the future, you know, uh, just anything that you don't want to leave out of the interview. Um, well, I, I think just like I said before, I, I feel very grateful and fortunate to still, um, you know, have my livelihood at least be somewhat uh, kept together and realized that during this time, uh, you know, I, I, being able to teach, even if it is remote, 
uh, being able to perform a little bit, even if it, it even if it is remote, I feel very grateful to be able to do. Um, you know, especially like I said, having come from a background where violin wasn't my focus, you know, to kind of have have all these performing opportunities and and teaching opportunities, even even during this pandemic. I just, I'm very very grateful for very grateful for uh, people that patron these online events. I think it's it means a lot to us musicians for sure. Definitely, yeah. And um, I don't know for for me this this last year has been um, tough creatively. Uh, just I, I there have been so many people out there putting out um, performances, putting out content, putting out so much, and um, I, I admire that so much. And I I kind of had the opposite experience where. Um, going into the pandemic, you, you see all this free time and all this time where you, you would have been busy with uh, other projects or other concerts and preparing for things, but I found it really just the motivation just kind of dropped for me. And so um, being presented with this project and, and having you and the symphony uh, take a chance on us and, and uh, let us have this opportunity to create something new and let us go a little wild <laughs> um, with it ha has been a lot of fun and um, re really has given me and I think both of us something um, to work for, something to, that we feel kind of proud of that we that has come out of this time. So we want to thank you for, <laughs> for taking that chance on us and uh, letting us kind of have a have a crazy time with it. <laughs> um, well, and of course, uh, conductors always like to take all the credit for these types of projects, but you guys deserve all the credit for some amazing work. Um, really, really excited to share this new program with our audiences here um, this spring. Uh, it's called the Music Lab, and this is a really fun interactive program for young audiences, but we also think it's going to be fun for adults to watch with the kids too. So looking forward to that. And um, as with all of our digital programming, and this is for the benefit of our listeners today, everything we do is, is free and available on demand. So whether you're watching it during the premiere week here or you're checking it out later, we appreciate you seeing our work, as Austin said. And more than anything else, we really appreciate you guys, um, the great teaching you're doing, the fabulous um, performances you give, and especially this great project. So thanks so much for doing this, guys. Yeah, thanks oh, so thanks much, Jason. Thanks so much. Bravo.